Welcome to vSkills, YouTube channel. In this video, you will learn about the top interview questions for Kubernetes and Docker. So, let's get started. Question number one, what is Kubernetes? The answer is, Kubernetes is a container management system developed in the Google platform. The purpose of Kubernetes is to manage a containerized application in various types of physical, virtual, and cloud environments. Google Kubernetes is a highly flexible container tool to deliver even complex applications, consistently. Applications run on clusters of hundreds to thousands of individual servers. Question number two, what tasks are performed by Kubernetes? The answer is, Kubernetes is the Linux kernel that is used for distributed systems. It helps you to be abstract the underlying hardware of the nodes, servers, and offers a consistent interface for applications that consume the shared pool of resources. Question number three, how to run Kubernetes locally? The answer is, Kubernetes can be run locally using the Minikube tool. It runs a single node cluster in a VM, virtual machine, on a computer. Therefore, it offers the ideal way for users who have just started learning Kubernetes. Question number four, what is Minikube? The answer is, Minikube is software that helps the user to run Kubernetes. It runs on the single nodes that are inside VM on your computer. This tool is also used by programmers who are developing an application using Kubernetes. Question number five, what are the various services available in Kubernetes? The answer is, various services available in Kubernetes are Cluster IP service Load balancer service Node port service External name creation service Question number 6, what is Kubelet? The answer is The Kubelet is a service agent which controls and maintains a group of pods by checking pod specification using Kubernetes. The Kubelet runs on each node and allows to communicate between a master node and a slave node. Question number seven, what is Cube Proxy? The answer is, Cube Proxy is an implementation of both a network proxy and a load balancer. It is used to support service abstraction used with other networking operations. It is responsible for directing traffic to the container depend on IP and the port number. Question number eight, what is orchestration in Kubernetes? The answer is, orchestration in Kubernetes defines as an automatic method of scheduling the work of every container. It is used for applications that are based on microservices within clusters. Question number 9, what is Prometheus and Kubernetes? The answer is, Prometheus is an application that is used for monitoring and alerting. It can be called out to your systems, grab real-time metrics, compress it, and stores properly in a database. Question number 10, what are the tools for container orchestration? The answer is, the tools for container orchestration are, Docker Swarm, Apache Mesos, and Kubernetes. Question number 11, what are the objects of Kubernetes? The answer is, objects that are used in Kubernetes are, pods, replication sets and controllers, jobs and cron jobs, daemon sets, distinctive identities, deployments and stateful sets. Question number 12, what is the stateful set in Kubernetes? The answer is, the stateful set is a workload API object that is used to manage the stateful application. It can also be used to manage the deployments and scaling the sets of pods. The state information and other data of stateful pods are stored in the disk storage, which connects with the stateful set. Question number 13. What is a replica set in Kubernetes? The answer is. A replica set is a process that runs multiple instances of a pod and keeps the specified number of pods constant. Its purpose is to maintain the specified number of pod instances running in a cluster at any given time to prevent users from losing access to their application when a pod fails or is inaccessible. Question number 14. Why do we use Cube API Server? The answer is. Cube API Server is an API server of Kubernetes that is used to configure and validate API objects, which include services, controllers and more. It provides the front end to the cluster shared region using which components interact with each other. Question number 15. What are the types of Kubernetes pods? The answer is, there are two types of pods in Kubernetes. First, single container pod, it can be created with the run command. Second, multi-container pods, it can be created using the create command in Kubernetes. Question number 16. What are the labels in Kubernetes? The answer is. Labels are a collection of keys that contain some values. 
The key values are connected to pods, replication controllers, and associated services. Generally, labels are added to some object during its creation time. They can be modified by the users at runtime. Question number 17. What do you mean by persistent volume? The answer is, a persistent volume is a storage unit that is controlled by the administrator. It is used to manage an individual pod in a cluster. Question number 18. What are secrets in Kubernetes? The answer is, secrets are sensitive information like the login credentials of the user. They are objects in Kubernetes that stores sensitive information like username and password after performing encryption. Question number 19. What is Semitex Docker Agent? The answer is, Semitex Docker Agent is a log collection agent with events and metrics. It runs as a small container in each Docker host. These agents gather metrics, events, and logs for all cluster nodes and containers. Question number 20. What is OpenShift? The answer is, OpenShift is a public cloud application development and hosting platform developed by Red Hat. It offers automation for management so that developers can focus on writing the code. Question number 21. What is K8S used for? The answer is, Kubernetes also referred to as K8S, is an open source platform used to manage Linux containers across private, public and hybrid cloud environments. Businesses also can use Kubernetes to manage microservice architectures. Containers and Kubernetes are deployable on most cloud providers. Question number 22. What is PVC? The answer is. PVC stands for Persistent Volume Claim. It is storage requested by Kubernetes for pods. The user does not require to know the underlying provisioning. This claim should be created in the same namespace where the pod is created. Question number 23. What is the Kubernetes network policy? The answer is, network policy defines how the pods in the same namespace would communicate with each other in the network endpoint. Question number 24. What are daemon sets? The answer is, daemon sets are a set of pods that runs on a host. They are used for host layers attributes like monitoring networks or simple networks. Question number 25. What is Heapster? The answer is, Heapster is a performance monitoring and metrics collection tool supported natively on the Kubernetes cluster. It runs like any other pod in the cluster, discovering all nodes and querying information from Kubernetes nodes. This container management tool works via an on-machine agent. Question number 26. What is etcd in Kubernetes? The answer is. etcd is a store for the configuration, state, and metadata of Kubernetes clusters. It is written in the Go programming language and represents the cluster state at a given point in time. This data store serves as the backbone of distributed systems. Question number 27. How do we control the resource usage of pod? The answer is. With the use of limit and request, resource usage of a pod can be controlled. Request means, the number of resources being requested for a container. If a container exceeds its request for resources, it can be throttled back down to its request. Limit means, an upper cap on the resources a single container can use. If it tries to exceed this predefined limit it can be terminated if K8s decides that another container needs these resources. If you are sensitive towards pod restarts, it makes sense to have the sum of all container resource limits equal to or less than the total resource capacity for your cluster. Question number 28. What is pod disruption budget? The answer is. A pod disruption budget allows you to limit the disruption to your application when its pods need to be rescheduled for some reason such as upgrades or routine maintenance work on the Kubernetes nodes. ECK manages a default PDB per elastic search resource. Question number 29. What is the use of init container in Kubernetes? The answer is. In Kubernetes, an init container is the one that starts and executes before other containers in the same pod. It's meant to perform initialization logic for the main application hosted on the pod. For example, create the necessary user accounts, perform database migrations, create database schemas and so on. Question number 30. What is a default namespace and what problem occurs while using it? The answer is. A default namespace is a namespace that does not include a prefix. The default prefix is applied to all the elements that do not include a prefix and is unique for different XML ports. While using the default namespace alone, it becomes hard over time to get an overview of all the applications you can manage in your cluster. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.